What's up everybody and welcome. If you're new here, I'm Trent and this is Allie. Hello. We live in this van and we're traveling currently from the United States all the way down to South America. We're currently in Costa Rica and we decided to make a video to explain to you guys kind of the pros and the cons of traveling full-time. People ask us all the time, what is full-time travel like and is it worth it? And now that we've been living full-time in this van on the road for almost two years, yeah. we have plenty to share with you on the matter. Absolutely. <laughs> there are a lot of different ways to travel and for the context of this video, we're talking specifically about people who travel and work full-time. Full-time travel, at least the way that it relates to us, is not somebody that has a trust fund, that never goes home, that hops from country to country exploring. Full-time travel is somebody who works on the road while traveling and doesn't have a home base. Your home base is a hotel or an Airbnb or in our case, a van and you're constantly traveling and you're making money on the road. There are so many pros and cons of living this type of lifestyle and we've finally figured out the six top pros and top cons after much discussion. So to start it off, pro number one is that the scenery is always changing. Let me show you what I mean. Today, we're in the beautiful mountains of San Isidro in Costa Rica. Yesterday, we were down at the beach in a tropical lush rainforest. When you're traveling full time, every day is a new scenery and a new landscape to experience. Your front door is everywhere. So every day that we get up out of the van or maybe if you get up out of a hotel or an Airbnb, the front door is always changing. Whether it's in a marshy swampland, high in the mountains, on the beach, or in the desert, you get a new flavor every single day. Which is pretty incredible. Yeah, huge pro. When you're not spending money on rent, mortgage, utilities, insurance, and all the things that come with having a house, you can live for a lot cheaper, and you can end up spending your money on things you want to spend money on, rather than things you have to spend money on. A lot of people think that full-time travel is really expensive, that's because they're generally relating it to vacation. Vacation is rather expensive, but what me and Ali have found out while traveling through Central America is that it's actually cheaper to survive here than it is in the States, which leaves room for a lot of the little things that you wanna pay for, but you can't because you gotta make rent. So the next item that we're going to discuss that is also a pro is that if you don't like where you are, you can just move. This is definitely one of my favorite pros. Sometimes we're somewhere that we absolutely love, but they don't have exactly the type of activities we want to do. Wow, this road is insane. Or it starts to rain, and all of a sudden, what we want to do isn't possible. And when that happens, we have the luxury of being able to hop in the van and drive somewhere else. It's an unbelievable way of continuing to have a great time, no matter where you are. You aren't tied down with roots like you are in a house when you're living somewhere permanently. This is a huge plus. So right now, I think we're on our way to a really well-known farmer's market here in San Isidro in Costa Rica. There's supposed to be over 200 vendors with all different types of products, crafts, and foods. We've been looking forward to it. The weather is good today. I'm excited to go check it out. One of the best things about traveling full-time is that every market you go to is your local market. So we get to experience incredible foods and such diverse cuisines everywhere we go. It's really awesome because we get to experience these different cultures in every different country. And a lot of people think once you cross the border into Mexico and all of Central America that the food is relatively the same, but it's really not the case. Everywhere is unique and we get to experience it all. This is a huge pro for us because we are foodies through and through. We're actually going to go do some shopping now. So 
this brings us to our fifth pro of full-time travel. The thing that we find is experiencing these cultures and being in different countries gives you so many opportunities. You get to learn Spanish, you get to learn what the people are like, what they dress like, what they think of Americans. This is a huge plus and it's not something that everybody gets the opportunity to do. We also get to kind of intertwine and intermingle with the local cultures and the local people a lot more than you do when you go on vacation and you hang out in a resort or maybe you hang out in a hotel. We get to fully immerse ourselves in the culture. But my favorite reason of them all is that wherever we go, we're always home. If we're in a crowded city, if we're out in the mountains, if we're hot, if we're cold, we always can come back to our little house. We can always feel comfortable here. Maybe that's just a perk of traveling in a van. Maybe that's an advantage of traveling in a van, but home is wherever you park it. And we get to sleep in our own bed every night. We get to cook in our own kitchen every day. It makes life so much better. A lot of times you just kind of want to curl up in your own bed with your own pillow. And we get that luxury. And right now, I am gonna cook in my own kitchen. So now that we've taken you guys through the beginning of our day, we've explained to you the six biggest pros that we've found about full-time travel. Now I think we're actually gonna make some lunch and then we're gonna explain to you guys some of the cons. All right guys, so I know we already talked about food. Food is one of the things that falls into the pro category, but this is con number one. And food actually falls into cons as well. Sometimes when you're traveling all the time, you're in different countries, you're with these different cultures that we've been mentioning, and you just wanna find a staple food. You wanna find some comfort food, something you've been used to, maybe a hamburger or some pizza, and you just can't find it. Honestly, that's not as bad as when you're excited to try something new, something fresh and local, and you get sick from it. Your stomach just isn't used to the way the food is prepared or cooked or the ingredients themselves. That's the worst, and it's definitely been something that we've had to deal with as we traveled through Central America. We love trying new foods, as I said before, but there's something that gets old about the food always being new because sometimes you want to have something familiar. That's kind of a big con, for me at least. But the local farmer's market went superbly well. We made some fresh, delicious avocado toast with tomatoes, cheese, and eggs. I think we're gonna dig in. We'll pick you guys up after we're done eating. So we just got to this really cool dog sanctuary. Actually, one of the other, I guess, pros and cons, but really a con of travel is that we get to meet all these incredible people, amazing places, amazing people, and you inevitably have to end up saying goodbye. There are usually a lot of people that you really want to hang out with, you really want to be friends with, and maybe you will be friends for the rest of your lives, but maybe you won't see them for the rest of your life, or maybe you won't see them for months at a time. Oftentimes you're traveling in different directions or they're stationary and you're traveling. That's why when we were able to meet up with Jordan and Kaylee of the Nomadic Movement and travel with them for a while, it made the experience so much better because it's really easy to feel isolated and lonely when you're traveling on the road by yourself full time. But having friends on the road like Kaylee and Jordan gives you a constant, it gives you a group of friends to hang out with every day. And that is something that's pretty invaluable on the road. So the next thing that's on our list of cons is that it's really hard to set a routine while you're on the road. A lot of times when you're at home or you're stationary, you have a gym that you go to, you get a routine down where every day after work or every day after school or whatever it may be, you go to the gym, you work out, maybe you come home and you watch TV and you kind of establish a routine. On the road, it's really hard because your scenery is constantly changing. If there is gyms around, it's a different gym every time. A lot of times when we come to places like this, we get to a perfect spot where we could lay out a yoga mat or we could get a little workout done and... It's starting to rain. It starts to rain. <laughs> So it's really hard to develop habits on the road. That's definitely a con of traveling full time is sometimes you work really hard, you try to establish a routine, but just things happen, the day to day changes, make it impossible sometimes. So that's a pretty big con, not being able to set a routine. Whew. Well, nice to get out of the rain. And it's awesome that we get to come back to our home, which is the van, because while we're on the road, this is our home. But this is also one of the cons is that there is no breaks. When you're full-time traveling, you are always traveling. Even when me and Allie took off two weeks recently to fly home, to see our families, to see some friends, that was almost more stressful and more of a vacation than our everyday lives. 
That doesn't mean that we're not enjoying what we're doing, but even when we go home, we're doing a more intense version of traveling because we don't have a house there, we don't have a car, we don't have anything. So when we're there, we're living out of a backpack, and when we're here, we're always on the road. So really, there's just no time to regroup and recharge. You're constantly on the go, and I think that that falls into the con category. That kind of brings us to the next point, which is that when you're traveling full time, you're in beautiful destinations, but you can't experience them the way that you would if you were on vacation. So a lot of people might look at this lifestyle with envy, and it is incredible, but if you were gonna experience it in a normal way, you would take two or three weeks off of work, you'd sit at the beach, you'd really soak it in. And when we're traveling full time, we're so grateful to experience these amazing destinations, but sometimes you can only experience them partially because you're still having to work full time. What you doing down there? Trying to figure out why why the fan keeps fluctuating. We have an electrical problem with the fan. And this brings us to our probably the biggest con on the list, and that's that no matter what type of traveling you're doing, there are always problems. There's problems in life, period. But when you're traveling, there's so many things and there's so many variables that can go wrong that you always end up with a lot of problems. And really, how much fun you have while traveling depends on your ability to roll with the punches. When you're full-time traveling, every day you're dealing with a new problem, a new type of problem. And this can get really old, but all you have to do is keep your head up, stay positive, and push through it. But it's still a pretty big con. So like Ali said, this is a full-time job, even though it looks like a full-time adventure because it is a full-time adventure, but it's also a full-time job. So if you're thinking of doing full-time travel for a job or a career, and this is something that you're looking into, just keep in mind, it's not all rainbows and unicorns the way that it might look. We love it, and we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found this video entertaining, funny, informative, boring, stupid, anything, hit the like button for us, help us out. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already. Please, and we will talk to you soon, guys. See you guys on the next Thank one. Thank you.